Hey guys, this is a market update. I think bears are going to be in an absolute mess over the next 12 months or so. Typical Bitcoin cycle, typical macro cycle. China's starting to pump the gas and they've been given the go ahead by the Fed who are starting to ease as well. The price level is never allowed to fall and inflation is starting to come down into their targets. And so they don't like that. They hate disinflation. They cannot let it happen. And so stimulus will pour into markets and that puts asset prices higher. And that is inflationary and that will rear its head in 12, 18 months time. And that's the next bear market. But we've got the bull market to look forward to. So let's look at that in this video. We're seeing the first potential green shoots here, right? So we're seeing this price level defended twice and bounces from that. We have actually broken through this price level here and we're going higher into the kind of reclaiming the previous 60, 65 range. Look, we're still in this downtrend until we break this. I think maybe we just bounce around here for a little bit, but it's the tsunami of stimulus coming. That's the, the thing to worry about, right? It's not whether we trade at 65 or 58 or 68. It's this tsunami over the next year or so, which must raise asset prices when valued in the fear. And so I think it's coming and super positive about price action over the next 12 months. If you do trade crypto, check out Bybit. Link down below if you haven't got an account yet. Uh, make a deposit by that link. You can get a deposit bonus up to $30,000. The price level of goods and services and assets is just never allowed to fall. It's just as simple as that. And so we're seeing deflationary pressures. We're seeing central banks believe that those deflationary pressures are enough to actually start cutting rates and being a bit easier. And so it's not like the last cycle where you just had this helicopter money. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be more of a normal cycle. And so you know, you're not going to have this, you know, three month period where you just get this 8x, right? It's, it's not like that unless we get some sort of crazy crash like we did back then, but it doesn't seem as likely, right? It seems like more of a slow down, slightly higher in employment. That's what they wanted and that's what they're getting, right? But it's not the 2020 cycle. So it's going to be a lot more slow and steady probably. But this is where we are, right? The sweet spot of the next 12 months or so, this is where they stimulate. And it looks like they will do anything necessary to make sure the price level remains positive, depending on where the price level is. Nominal GDP, you can see M1 year over year, I think this is in China, going negative. They just don't let this happen, okay? So this is gonna go positive again, and that's good for asset prices. We're in the sweet spot of the macro cycle. Uh, you know, M&A support, capital market support, right? They're telling companies to buy back their stock. They want the price level positive again, and they will get it. As we can see here from the Norden, base case is that China stimulus is less impactful short term, but more persistent. It's not the 2020 cycle, right? It's more of a normal cycle where they just put money in, put money in, see how it goes, right? But that is still positive for asset prices. And we can see here, we're just starting to react from this as well. So what is a bull market? It's where you bounce from this uh, active realized price, right? You can see you bounce around this, it's pretty positive price action. That's a bear market where you've, you know, essentially break this support. We are bouncing off this support on multiple occasions now, slightly positive price action this week as well. So it's a bull market. We're bouncing off the moving averages. We're bouncing off the on-chain. It's a bull market. We've got 12 months ahead of, you know, uh, countries stimulating prices. And so where the price level goes short term, we don't know. It's just the fundamental market that we're in right now is pretty positive for risk assets. Gold's pricing it in, Bitcoin's pricing it in, stock market's pricing it in. Look at this as well, right here the, on the right hand side. This is where we are now. This is funding rates. Very, very cool. We're not overdone at 65K. The market is cool. The market is not over leveraged. The market is not speculating too much on this. Market's actually dead right now. Pretty dead. No one's paying attention. No one's taking any speculative positions. It's a really good place to be in when you've got China stimulating and the US cutting rates. It's just a good place to be at 65K. This is where we were earlier on in the cycle around the ETFs. A lot of speculation coming in. The market's way cooled off and we're still at 65, mostly with spot buying. Really decent position. That's why I think bears are in a really bad spot over the next 12 months or so. The severity of the situation is pretty wild, to be honest. So this is gross federal debt to GDP. The ratio here, it's at pretty much uh, a historic high. Yeah, not good huge amounts of debt in relation to how much uh, GDP is produced. And then we have interest as a percent of GDP, again, moving a lot higher into you know, generational highs. So it's not a good situation, especially when you look at this, and the net interest is now one of the largest outlays in the budget. There is a massive, massive deficit and none of this can be cut, right? Social security, uh, Medicare, health, defense, none of that is gonna get cut. There is a massive deficit. It's pretty much half of total receipts. 
What's going to get cut to kind of bring this in line? Well, the answer is nothing can get cut. And so the only uh, one of these which is going to get hit is the currency, which is bondholders, right? So you're going to have to cut interest rates as low as possible to refinance everything at the lowest rate possible. Cut interest rates, refinance, that's inflationary, right? That moves asset prices higher. And maybe you have to get the central bank to print money to buy back some of this debt to try and actually cancel it out and monetize the debt. And that means asset prices go higher. Essentially, what you're doing is anyone that holds dollars, you're stealing some of their stuff to try and pay this off, right? And so that's, the, that's how I see the next you know, decade or so playing out is dollar holders, you're just going to have to give some of the, your labor to pay this off, right? And it's funny that what we're seeing crypto do is you've got Bitcoin here, which is kind of the solution to this, right? So we don't have to play that currency game anymore. But you also have uh, stable coins proliferating the dollar around the world at higher rates, which means that people that hold dollars, which to be fair, are a lot more stable than their currencies that they're in, you know, they're going to have to pay a little bit of a fee to hold those dollars, which is 10, 12, 15% inflation in the dollar, which again, may be better than their currency, but crypto can help do that with stable coins is if the US wants to pay this off, you can't just cut social security and all this. You have to steal the labor of people that hold the dollar. That's the only way out of this, right? Is debasing the currency, making it buy less, you know, printing the money to buy back some of this to try and reduce the debt. And so if you're using stable coins and you're doing that, you know, hey, you're going to have to pay some of your labor to the states to actually reduce this over the next few decades or so. So that's the way I see it. You know, the dollar is still remaining the most desirable fiat currency and new entrants around the world in emerging markets that want to be holding dollars now. You're going to be giving a, some of your labor as a fee to the states so they can pay this off. If you're in Western countries, Bitcoin with its volatility, maybe you can handle it a bit more. That's going to actually price all of this in. It's really the only option, right? Because the only thing that can get hit here is the currency, nothing else. They're not going to cut any spending. It just doesn't happen. The only way they can try and pay this off is to debase the currency and debase the labor of new entrants into the dollar system through stable coins. The game really is that the currency has to expand. The amount of currency units have to expand and they have to reduce the amount of debt in relation to GDP. The only real way to do that is to make sure rates are very low so that you can keep refinancing. And then every, every so often you have to print money to buy back that debt and you're taking the labor of, of the currency holders. M2 doesn't go down, right? And if we can see Bitcoin in relation to M2, it does draw down sometimes when they want the market to draw down. That gives them cover to print more money again. Uh, and so when M2 does inflect to the upside, which is most of the time, Bitcoin starts to price that. And I think we're in an inflationary cycle here as well. So Bitcoin is the play. If you do trade crypto, check out the Bybit deposit bonus down below. And the Crypto Investor course will be updated this autumn. So if you haven't got that yet, check the link below for that one. I'm James, it's MyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.